is there anywhere else that you could want to be in minus 30 than, than the boreal forest? I don't think so. This is awesome. And I cannot feel my mouth. It's cold outside. Oh. We just had a major snowstorm today. It's crazy. Tons of fresh snow, which is good. And then the sky's kind of cleared and the wind is just crazy on the lake. Wind's picked up. Oh, but with that wind chill, I mean, it feels like it's minus 40. And then you start doing 50 mile an hour down the lake and what is that, like minus a thousand? Like, I don't know what the heck that would be, but it is cold. So I just snuck into the lee here of this island. I'm gonna stop for a break and have a little discussion. First hydration. Just a little quick side note, for those of you that have water bottles and you're out in the winter and they freeze, this little cozy here, Made by Outdoor Research, perfect for Nalgene bottles. Even at minus 30, I'll get like six hours before anything in here will freeze if I put hot water into it to begin with. That's a good thing, because you can't drink frozen water. You don't realize, you know, you're using all your muscles and you're all tensing up as you're riding. But once you stop, man, oh, things get cold quickly. I need to put on my my took. So while I am stopped here in the lee of this island just getting out of the wind, I figured I would talk about what's in this pack right here. This is the ultimate safety system for me when I'm out in the boreal forest on a snowmobile. This is just my dedicated snowmobile pack. Everything that's in here is designed to work with my snowmobile, the style of trips that I'm doing with my snowmobile. And this here will keep me going for a couple days should I break down or have an issue or get injured. I have everything between what's in here, what's on the snowmobile itself to, uh, to get me through until I can get myself to some help or until some help gets to me. So I should start also by saying that that this video is not for everybody. Everyone kind of fine tunes their own system to make it work for them and that and they totally should. I'm just relaying what what works best for me in this environment. So we're right on the border of Woodland Caribou Park here. It's like an endless wilderness. I'm in a town of Red Lake, Ontario. That's a couple miles down. This is the end of the road. There is nobody else. Cell service, I'm already like, you know, three miles from town. Cell service is gone, there, there's no help. Uh, when you get out on this lake, which is over 20 miles wide, there is no help, there's nobody out there. So I have to work on a system that works for me to make sure that I'm safe, and more importantly, I'm comfortable. You know, if something breaks down, you don't wanna make it miserable for yourself. So starting with the sled, this is a Skidoo Expedition SE 900. Four stroke engine, straight gas, totally dependable. Comes with an integrated winch which sits right in here. So if I ever get stuck in slush, if I'm ever like just having issues, roll the sled, whatever, I can literally plug this winch into its own wiring system underneath the seat. I can 
throw the winch around a, a tree or whatever have you, I can winch myself out of whatever situation I'm in. I also have ice screws that if I'm ever really badly stuck in slush and I'm so far from shore that I need trees and I don't have any, I can screw these things into the ice, then I can attach the winch to that and pull myself out with that. It's a really cool system, really fortunate and it's saved my butt a number of times. So the sled itself is amazing, it's also a wide track, it has an adjustable suspension, also the skis that are on this are a super wide floaty ski. Kind of helps me float a little more when I get into the really deep snow. So most skis on snowmobiles are like, like that. These ones are like that. So tons of flotation. It, uh, it works out really well. In terms of setting up the snowmobile, right here, I got my Axe Mate. This here is a Wetterlings 26 inch Axe. This is my, I think it's like a two pound head. This is my bread and butter winter axe. I love this thing. Look at that, right in the pocket, right into the clip, and it's just a way I don't have to deal with anything. Totally out of the way, right in the, the well where I put my legs, out of sight, out of mind. It's awesome. This here is my gun boot. It's secured just by a little pin. So I just pull that pin and, oh, see that guys? I just dropped it in the snow. How am I going to find that now? <laughs> Don't drop stuff in the snow. Anyways, if I want to take this out, remove the pin and you just pull it out. This thing's made by Colpin. It's an awesome gun boot. I've tried many different varieties of their gun boots and uh, by far, uh, <laughs> by far, this is the best one. And when it comes to the gun itself, right here, I have a cotter pin gonna pull that this thing lifts up and away and then it's got to reach in here and I pull out my rifle now you can use a towel I have some tissue paper I stuff this boot solid so that the gun is never rattling around inside there's a scope on this gun I don't want things to rattle around that's just asking for trouble it can put your scope off we don't want that here's the gun this is a Tika T3 in stainless with a Leupold VX2 scope. My favorite gun. It's chambered in 243 Winchester. Stainless steel barrel. I don't have to worry about it getting wet and then having to dry it dried off. It's not going to rust. 243 Winchester and I use Hornady Superformance bullets. You might be asking why it is I carry a rifle with me everywhere I go out here. You know, this is the real deal wilderness. There is nothing else out here and if I get stuck, uh, a lot of things can happen. Um, you know, if I got into a really big jam, I could use this to hunt for sustenance if I had to. But uh, more importantly, you know, like there are a lot of wolves in this area. And even though I do hunt wolves, and that's more for harvesting the fur to make stuff like this, you know, when you get, <laughs> if I was stuck out here for the night, sometimes I've been on the lake and I've seen like packs of 12 and 14 wolves. The last thing that I want is to be in that situation without a firearm. Do I think I'm ever in real danger with wolves in the winter? Not really, they eat pretty well out here. But I always say, if you have a tool in the toolbox, you can always reach for it if you need it. So it, it just gives me peace of mind. And at the end of the day, if you look back through historical accounts of people that traveled the wilderness in winter, whether it's old books from the, the 1920s and 30s and 40s and whenever, everyone had a rifle with them. It was a tool that they used on a regular basis that lives true today. I would definitely never come out as far as I go without a rifle by my side with me everywhere I go. It's just what I do. Okay, moving on to this side of the sled. Here's a Colpin chainsaw bracket. This thing is indispensable. It's attached to the frame, bolted on. Here's the chainsaw bar and chain, comes down through it. It's also held on by a really strong bungee cord. Some people might ask why I carry a chainsaw. And <laughs> out here, just like, the rifle is a tool. The chainsaw is also a really important tool. We, a lot of times we're going across the lake and there's narrows with unsafe ice. So we have to take overland trails that are pre-cut, but sometimes trees are down. Cut those trees down quickly with a chainsaw instead of getting the big bow saw out. And then you're working really hard. You're working up a sweat. Then you jump back on the sled and head down the lake in minus 20 with 20 mile an hour winds. It, you're just gonna freeze. You don't wanna be sweating. So chainsaw makes quick work of those down logs. Anytime you have a, a situation where there's a tree down chainsaw 
is the preferred tool out here. Also, if I were to get stuck for the night, and I mean really stuck, if I'm 20 miles down the lake and I break down and I know I'm gonna have to spend the night, I can just break this out. I can buck up a whole night's worth of wood really quickly. I can also cut poles for shelter really quickly, making sure that I'm high and dry and comfortable for the night that I'm gonna spend out there. I don't bother with bringing an extra tank of gas or oil for the chainsaw. I just make sure that the reservoirs are filled before I head out. That's all I need. This guy's never let me down. All right, in terms of my GPS, which is a really important tool to have here, especially like in whiteout conditions like we had a couple hours ago, uh, I couldn't see. I was out on the lake. I literally could not see a thing. Having a GPS is really important in that situation. Obviously, I would never... Uh, trust it with my life. You always want to make sure that you're watching what you're doing. However, this thing can really save your bacon, reassure you of where you are. All I got to do is touch the map whenever I want, zoom in. It tells me exactly where I am. It's also moving along on the lake. So it tells me whether I'm on a trail or a lake, exactly where I am at all times. It tells me the time, compass bearing. I can mark waypoints. I can do everything. But what's important is where it's located. As you can see, it's directly in my line of sight. It's just above my gauge cluster. So I'm not looking down at my handlebars or anywhere else. I'm not getting distracted from the trail or the lake. I can just look straight on. And then when I wanna you know, see something, I can just tap it, away it goes. Also, pretty neat, this thing cradles right into that mount. So this was kind of an integrated solution with Bombardier or Skidoo, but uh, basically there's just contact points and it just shoves right in there. Look at that. Battery will never run out. It's a uh, lithium battery that's in there, but it also is charging all the time in that cradle. No wires, no messing around. Awesome. When it comes to true backcountry travel out here on the lakes and the trails, having really wide skins on your skis really gonna pay off for you. So these are aftermarket. Had my Skidoo dealer put them on. Look at the size of these skins. I mean, they're so wide. When I'm out on the lake after, I'll take a, a picture for everyone and show you guys exactly what these things are really looking like. But my ski is only like, like that wide. But my skins are like that. So all that's gonna do is keep me floating way up high. So when I'm going down the lake at 30 or 40 or 50 miles an hour, I'm gonna be up a lot higher, riding up a lot safer. It's also when I get into the far back bays where the snow is starting to really pile in, it's gonna keep me up. It's gonna keep me up high, not gonna make me dig down because as soon as you start digging down and bogging down, you can get stuck and you don't want that, especially if you're miles away from somewhere. These things are invaluable. I think they were only a couple hundred bucks at my uh, Skidoo dealer. Well worth it. I just wanted to show you what these ice claws look like. It's these guys right here. Hopefully that focuses. So that cap comes off and there's a sharp edge in there. You push that down on the ice and then you take that, that lever right there and you just start screwing it. And man, these things are awesome. And once I have those cleats or spikes into the ice itself, those are some spare batteries. Here's my winch. You can see it's all there. The wiring is all complete inside here. So nothing's hanging out. I can then take this winch and it's got a big carabiner on it. I can attach it to any of the bumpers that are on the front of this sled. Look at the bumper system I got here. You know, not all sleds have this, but this thing is invaluable. It was all designed around that winch. So have that winch. You know, here's your little, here's my little remote control for the winch. It works great. And I can just winch myself to safety or I can work off this back bumper as well and uh, get myself out of a situation. So just finishing off with the sled itself, my camera gear is always in a Pelican case at the bottom of this carriage or this hitch, whatever you want to call it. But I always have my snowshoes in here as well. These are synthetic snowshoes. I think they're made by Faber. These are uh, a bear paw design, a true really wide bear paw design synthetic shoe. It's the only one that I actually am aware of uh, on the market. Now, full disclosure, I'm a traditional snowshoe kind of guy. Love traditional wooden snowshoes. I think they offer the best flotation. But for this application where I'm packing stuff up to go out for the day, and this is just my emergency kit, if anything were to happen, I like to have synthetics because at the end of the day, they're just stronger. You know, if, I, uh, if I'm going through a trail 
and I have these attached the way that they are and I get really close to a tree, I've actually snapped wooden snowshoes carried in this manner. Once it's snapped, it's, it's snapped, right? There's nothing you can do. These guys won't do that. It's an aluminum frame. They are the widest pear paw synthetic snowshoe that I've ever seen. And I'm going to take them off here and I'll show you guys what these are all about. Bungee cords are great, but when it's minus 30, they kind of suck. All right, so there's, there's the synthetic Faber. This is the Mountain Quest Faber Bear Paw Synthetic Snowshoe. It's the only one that I'm aware of in a synthetic model that is in this design. Look at all the flotation. I got a cramp on and these big bindings that they offer actually accept big pack boots like this. Usually it's been a problem with synthetics accepting big boots, but these ones work fine. So this is what I carry. Again, this is just for like heading out emergency kind of conditions. They do offer good flotation as well. Not as good as traditional, but uh, they get the job done. And for this application, they are perfect. Okay, we're almost done the sled. Oh, oh that should never, ever, ever happen. Now for the helmet and it's kind of an overlooked situation for a lot of people, but it shouldn't be. Your helmet, when you're snowmobiling out here in this true remote wilderness, your helmet is such an essential piece of gear. First of all, whether you have a balaclava or two balaclavas or whatever you have for head protection and neck protection, at the end of the day, this is what's gonna keep you warm. This is an expensive helmet. There's no getting around it. It's a BRP, BVS2 helmet. It's like $600 for a helmet, but it's insulated. It keeps me really warm. It's also got the integrated BVS2 kind of breathing system. So basically this little apparatus here covers my nose and my chin area and I'm breathing all my hot air is breathing right into there. So once I've got that clicked in, all my air is coming out here and you can already see that just from a, a short sled ride, there's already frost building up here and it's actually frozen. Sometimes you just gotta clear that out. But what that means is that instead of my hot air coming up into the visor system, it's coming out here. It can't go anywhere else because it's completely sealed by this. Why is that important? Well, when it's minus five, it doesn't really matter. But when it's minus 30, if you got that whole face shield down and all your air is coming into the visor section, you're gonna frost up and, and freeze up in there within like two, three minutes. You cannot see a thing. You can't be stopping every 10 minutes or five minutes or two minutes to scrape ice off the inside of your helmet. You'll never get it all off. And it's just a huge problem. And if you got long distances to cover, you're screwed. Uh, also, once you get that frosted and there's any kind of sun from the side or the front, the glare is insane. It'll blind you. It's just, uh, it's just not a good situation. Another cool feature this helmet has is it's got that, that sun shield, that visor, right? So this is polarized as well. And when I'm heading down the lake, this cuts out a lot of glare. I can actually see things a lot better. And more important than that, when it's a really cloudy day, when it's really overcast, the lake, it just all becomes a blend of gray. And ice ridges and obstacles that could be presenting themselves on the lake, you'll usually never see them. But this helps, doesn't always solve the problem, but it does help you to see ice ridges and just definition on the lake. So that's pretty cool. Full face shield and as added insurance, this is also an electronic model that I can plug into my sled that has a receptacle. It's just a cord like this. So not only am I breathing out of here so that the air, my warm air, isn't mixing with the cool air in the helmet, fogging everything up, but my visor itself is also heated so the combination of the two is gonna keep me frost free all day. I can worry about seeing what I'm doing instead of worrying about a frosted up helmet. All right, so we got the snowmobile set up. We know what we're doing there. Now let's talk about 
kind of the meat and potatoes of this entire system. Let's talk about what's in my pack, the pack that I pack for heading out into the boreal on a snowmobile, the essential items that I need not just to survive for a night or two, but to thrive. Also, we're gonna talk about my clothing system, what I choose to take on my person, as well as extra clothing that allows me to snowmobile all day, stay warm, but is also functional. And before we get started, I do wanna preface this with saying, this is what works for me out in this landscape. This is not for everybody. Everyone does their own thing. Find what works best for you. That's always the best way to do it. This is what I found through trial and error is doing best for me. So it's minus 31 right now. I'm not stripping off all my layers. I, I just can't do it. My feet are already freezing. But suffice to say, underneath me here, I have a smart wool base layer system, top and bottom. On top of that, I have a wool power uh, 200 weight thermal underwear system, top and bottom. When I'm snowmobiling, I have a balaclava that not just covers my head area and my face, also comes down and I make sure it contacts my skin. It's got like a big bib area on it. That's really important so that no wind gets down underneath by your chest area. And then I have a neck gaiter as well that goes over top of that. And then when I'm about to put my helmet on, I do put a liner uh, toque on, just a really thin layer, just for some extra protection. <sighs> Sorry, my, my head's getting really cold here. I'll show you guys here. Don't take me the wrong way. I'll show you what I wear underneath though, for pants, is I'm wearing my green Kodet wool pants. And I got suspenders on them too, somewhere. Okay, so then on top of my wool pants and my two layers of thermal underwear, these are a pair of outdoor research, just kind of snow pants. Uh, I don't know what they are, but they're 100% waterproof. More importantly, they're windproof and they have some insulating properties, but not much. I just wear them for the windproofness and the, uh, the waterproofness. On my feet, I have only one base layer sock. I do not personally find that layering socks, two, three layers of socks works for me. I like to have a really thin sock and a really warm boot. The whole point is to warm up the area between your sock and the edge of the boot, right? That pocket of air that's created, you wanna warm that up. And I find that if I have too many socks on, I'm so tight in the boot that I just cannot warm that air up and my feet end up freezing. Even with three layers of socks in this temperature, my feet would be colder than they are right now, which is actually really, really cold. So anyways, for boots, Sorel Glacier, I've tried out so many boots, Baffins, Actins, Sorels. These guys are still the best. And the reason being, they have a double sole. So if you actually pull the boot apart, there's a liner sole inside the liner. There's also a removable sole at the bottom of the boot. That's a lot of insulation and you lose a lot of your heat when it comes to footwear and boots with contacting the cold ground. So if you can add that much space between your foot and the ground, instead of say this much in another boot, you know, that's good, this isn't. So having that extra insulation layer I find works really, really well to protect my core area. Again, I have those two layers of thermal underwear, then a wool sweater, and then right now, because it's really cold, I have a synthetic fill Arcteryx jacket on with a hood, and then I have my outer layer that's with me all the time. I absolutely love this thing, it's so functional. It's a Boreal Mountain Anorak. Maybe I'll put a link in the description. Actually, I'm gonna put a link to everything that we're talking about here today in the video description. So you guys can just click away and, and check out all this gear and, and do what you want with it. Uh, yeah, so that's how I protect my torso. And then for hand protection, on the snowmobile only, I have these Outdoor Research Gore-Tex Outer Shell Leather Palmed Gloves. Leather palm's really important because you're dealing with sticks and branches and a whole bunch of crap all the time. It's gotta be durable. They also have a removable liner. So there's the liner and then the glove itself. I really like these nice and long gauntlets, as you can see. These guys pay huge dividends. All of my mitts that I bring out here for working in the bush are gauntlet style. I just think that's the way to go. It gives you extra protection and they're nice and durable. All right, now the fun stuff, the pack. So I'm gonna go through all this stuff. Again, this is the equipment that makes me safe and feel comfortable out here in the boreal. So we'll just get right into it. Thing before I, I get into the meat and potatoes of this pack. I wear this pack all the time when I'm traveling. So I have the cargo area. Again, you saw the snowshoes and, and the camera equipment and it was strapped in. 
A lot of people wonder why I don't strap this pack in. Here's the answer. If I go into the lake, right, if I, if I hit a hole, if anything happens to the sled and this is attached to it, my lifeline, my safety system is gone. I might as well put up the white flag because I'm not walking back, you know, 30 kilometers in, a, in minus 30. I'd freeze, especially if I had already gone into the water with the sled, let's say. So I carry this on my person. It's strapped to me. And if I did hit a hole, if I did fall in, the first thing I would do is take this off, throw that up on the ice, get that away from me. And then I always have my ice claws. Some guys wore them around their neck. I carry them in my pocket. Either way, I'm gonna grab them. This is just a cheap pair of Rapala ones or you can make some yourself. Boom, these come out. I can just right into the ice, pull myself out. I would say that within 10 to 15 seconds, I can have my pack off. I can be out of the ice and then I can deal with a really important situation at that point of just surviving and getting myself out. Ugh. I feel my mustache and beard starting to freeze. Okay, let's go into the pack. Number one, my water bottle. It's a Nalgene water bottle. It's right here, cozy. I fill this with hot water at the start of the day. Oh yeah, she's still nice and warm. Look at that. Okay, on the outside of my pack is my bow saw. Again, my snow machine has my chainsaw. If that goes in the water, I'm gonna need something. There's a saw. Oh, guys, it's cold out here. I should let you know that I've already rooted through this a little bit, so things aren't as organized as I would like, but I'll, I'll go through everything with you. Pair of gloves, in camp, gotta have extra gloves. I also have these mitts, which I'm actually gonna put on. Right now, my hands are freezing. The first thing that I did when I got off the snow machine is I, I took my balaclava off and I shoved it in the pack, so that's why that's there. Extra toque. I always have a spare down jacket. It never leaves the pack. It's right there, I can use it as a blanket. It's just a really old beater down jacket, but it pays huge dividends if you need extra insulation. I have a satellite phone. I have extra mitten liners. I have an extra toque. I have a pair of sunglasses and a pair of prescription glasses. So I always have two extra sets of contact lenses that are sitting on an inside pocket so that they don't freeze because otherwise they'd freeze instantly. And then I bring prescription glasses and my sunglasses. So in times like this, you can't really see it, but the sun is really bright glaring off the, off the snow in the lake. If I'm in camp at all, or if I'm stopped for a couple hours, the first thing I'm gonna do is put these on because you gotta protect your eyes at all times. You know, with the helmet on, you got protection with the polarized visor and that's all UV coated and all that. But in camp, you really gotta protect your eyes. This here, Outdoor Research Aurora Bivy. If I ever got into a really serious situation where I'm screwed, and I need shelter quick, like in the middle of a blizzard and I'm wet, whatever have you, if I wanna get out of the elements quickly, I know some of you might say bring a tarp. Personally, I bring a bivy, because within 20 seconds, I can have this set up, I can get inside of it, and for however long it takes for that storm to pass, I know that I'm not gonna get any more wet, and I'm out of the elements, I'm out of the wind, the cold, piercing wind, and I'm out of the snow. These bivvies are lifesavers, they're so small, you can put it up anywhere. This is a pot and in it is a lot of essential items and I'm gonna get into that in a minute. But here are the mitts that I have for in camp. Again, leather palm, these are sheepskin. These things are awesome, so warm. Oh, I love these guys. Here we have one pair of socks that's also in a uh, Ziploc bag. They're never gonna get wet. And I also have a top and a bottom thermal underwear. A complete change of thermal underwear. So if I'm soaking wet, I can strip down quickly, get these on, I'm dry. Ugh. I'm sorry if I'm talking like really fast or just kind of weird, like it's cold. Everything is cold right now. I am cold, it's hard to breathe in, it's a mess. So in here, I have birch bark, dried birch bark. I also have a couple bandages, but if I need to get a fire going real quick, Boom, birch bark. It is the fire starter of the boreal forest. This stuff is incredible. It will take a match. It will take a flame instantly. It'll take a spark off my, my fire steel. Instantly, gotta have some birch bark. 
matches in a pill bottle. These are the Strike Anywhere style of matches. I have a lighter. I also have two lighters on my inside pockets because this one, this ain't gonna work right now, right? It's so cold. But the ones on my inside pocket will work. I have a spork from Heavy Cover Canteen. It's titanium, nice and lightweight. So we're good there. I gotta move around for a sec, guys. I am so cold. I'm out of breath. I just ran. I like sprinted back and forth for like two minutes just to try and get some blood pumping. Minus 31 out here. Once you start sitting still for a couple minutes, it's just a mess. Whew, I can't even speak right now. It's like my jaw is frozen. Anyways, let's get going with this. Let's talk about pot system here. Now, this is in a plastic bag only because it's blackened and I don't want all my gear turning black. Put the camera in there sometimes. So I just have a double plastic bag system. You could also use these plastic bags for other things like in a pinch, you could put them on your feet because they don't breathe, so all your heat's gonna be reflected back. But anyways, let's get talking about the pot set. So the pot set itself, as you can see, is stainless. That's because I can do anything with it. I can get it over a fire. It's really durable. It has got a bale handle. This thing is just awesome. It's a zebra style can. But let's open it up and let's see what we got inside here. We have an extra lighter. I have an extra thermal foil blanket. You guys see these everywhere, they're like a couple bucks. Essential to have if you were in a real survival situation. I have a couple things of tea and instant coffee because if I ever am stuck somewhere, the last thing you wanna do is panic. You wanna be able to be rational about the situation and just stopping for a few minutes and having a cup of tea will just allow you to focus a little bit more on the task at hand. It'll allow you to take your mind off things, calm down, and then you can assess the situation. So I always have tea and coffee with me. I have a meal. This is just some Uncle Ben's rice. One pot meal, I can cook this up. And again, it's not that I'm gonna starve out here if I'm stuck for a couple days. It's about just being comfortable and taking my mind off things and uh, just kind of calming right down. I've got two candles in here. Candles are essential. Hand warmers, I could probably use these on my feet right now. Flagging tape, some people ask me why I use flagging tape. Well, yeah, I could use my ax and I could blaze trees, but in the winter, this stands out everywhere. So I can use this to just mark a trail. If I'm in an area where I'm kind of getting lost or I could be getting lost, I could also use these to flag trees and other objects. And if people were looking for me, they would see this from a, a much further distance than an ax blaze or anything else because it contrasts so well with the snow. That's essential. People are looking for stuff that stands out if they're looking for you. This will stand out. Compass, gotta have a compass. It also has a mirror. You can signal with that and uh, you can do lots of things with it. You can stare at yourself too. So compass, I've got a headlamp right here. Batteries I take out so that there's no issues with it inadvertently turning on while it's in here. So I just tape my batteries together and then I've got a couple bales of snare wire here as well. All right, so that essentially is what I have with me at all times on my person. The only other items we haven't talked about, I have a multi-tool, a Gerber multi-tool. I've got a Baco folding saw and I've got an Adventure Sworn belt knife, full tang, fixed blade, that's what you want. And this is it. And there is a fire steel with that as well. So what's the point to all of this? Well, the point is to ensure that if you are out in true wilderness where there is likely no help or no help for a while, if you put yourself in a situation where if you break down or you don't come home like you're supposed to or on schedule, you know you're likely gonna spend one, two, three nights in the bush, this is what I bring. This is why I have prepared these certain items that I have with me. Everything was thought out and I, I sat there and I analyzed, what do I need? What can I put into one pack that is going to allow me to thrive 
and make sure that I get through no matter what kind of a situation arises until help arrives. And let's make no mistake about it, this is not about surviving for a week or two. This is about just making it through a few days. So having some snare wire, it's so easy at this time of year. You see snowshoe hair tracks everywhere. I can set up like 15 snares. Snaring is about numbers really. So I set up 15 snares, I might get a rabbit, I might get two. I'm gonna eat that and uh, yeah, I'll be full. My belly will be full for that night or two it takes for people to come get me. So just because of the severity of the wilderness that we're in, you know, I do carry a satellite phone and I know not everyone can carry one of these. They are expensive. There's also new devices called like the Lorem InReach and Spot. Those are gonna allow you to call home and, uh, and contact people back home and let them know where you are. It might take them a day or two or three to get to you, but that's fine. So you make the call, you do what you need to do, you carry a tool with you in the toolbox that allows you to contact people and then you can use the items that you have here to just chill out, relax, be comfortable, be aware of your situation, but thrive out here and not be so worried and not freeze to death and not freak out. You have items here to make you comfortable. So with that, I'm gonna pack up all this crap. I'm gonna load back up on the sled. I'm gonna head down the lake. We got like 15 miles to cover today, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually quite a bit. But at the end of the road, there are lake trout. We'll see you on the next one. It feels crunchy. My eyes are heavy. This is like, I mean, for the women out there, is this what it feels like to wear makeup? Cause, cause this sucks. Uh, all right, down the lake we go.